so now that we have a payment proposal, let's have a look at then actually reviewing um, uh, the payment uh, proposal and then actually performing the payment run. So again, we're going to use the Manage Automatic Payments Fiori tile. So the scenario is the proposal has been created. We can now um, review and then finally process. And just remember that the proposal and payment step should not be performed by the same person so that you have a strong segregation of duties or financial controls. The best practice is to have two separate security roles in SAP and access between doing the proposal and the payment run. And for the master data, we're going to select the payment uh, run that we uh, started in the previous lesson. So let's jump in. So we're going to use the Manage Automatic um, Payments uh, Fiori app again, or Tile. And in this case, we're going to um, enter our company code, click Go, and then we should see our proposal sitting there under the proposals being processed. Now, just what I want to show you is that a proposal can be redone and deleted many times. It's only the payment where you are blocked in. So if I click delete here, I can say I want to delete the proposal that I used before, but it'll keep the parameters. So then the proposal then goes back to the parameter stage. I can then click on the um, um, on the payment run and I can click schedule and then redo the proposal again. So you can edit and redo the proposal many times, but you can only do the actual payment once. So here I'm just reading the proposal, start again with the schedule and just to just to refresh it. Because what I do want to show is that if you do redo a proposal, any manual blocking that was done previously needs to be redone. So if I click open and open the proposal for revision, you'll notice that because I re-ran the proposal, that the previous exceptions that I'd manually blocked or added in are now no longer there. So if I click on this um, supply over here and I, and I look at the details again by opening up, you'll notice that the, all of the items are now back in because the blocks I did before were manually only for the proposal. So by deleting the proposal and rerunning it, any manual selections need to be redone. However, if I had actually blocked the items in the Manage Supply Line Items app, then they would have been consistently blocked. So I hope that's clear. So in this case, I'm just going to click uh, Block Again so that only those large invoices for the $400,000 are, are available. So just read it that and just remember, you can always revise a proposal many times because you will have to negotiate an approval process and whoever is approving the payments will have the latitude to make those decisions. So again, I've got my two suppliers and again, this is really just your proposal list. And again, you can look at the exceptions any time. So the, the previous proposal list that really used to be printed out and evaluated is now more suited to, to an online display and view in Fiori. So if after reviewing the proposal, we can then just go back to the main screen and uh, you'll see we've got our proposal created again and um, actually just one other thing I just wanted to just show again if you just go back into that proposal um, again we were looking at the invoice detail with the payments and exceptions but there's also the summary view here so as part of the summary list you can see a total for the payment method and then you can use this little toggle here to jump between different views. You can see what is the total by currency if you were doing multiple foreign payments there that could be important and by bank account if you were paying from multiple bank accounts to different vendors. So besides the payments and exceptions, you also have that summary tab. So just wanted to point that out. OK, so going back to the main screen, once we have um, happy with our proposal, we can then now schedule it for payments. So if you select the proposal and now you click the schedule button, it automatically will um, come up with a scheduling for payment. And you'll see here it says schedule a payment and we can say start immediately. So this will actually now start the payment run or do the actual real postings. So here the payment is running and if we click go, it'll tell us when it's done and then it'll be a process payment. Now at this point, the payments will actually be being posted in SAP and any payment media is being created. So if I now click open payment list, instead of just being a proposal, this will now be the actual payments and the actual documents that were posted. So if I click on payments now, you'll see instead of having a, you know, a dummy document number, I've actually got the real document numbers of the payments that were being made. And if you open up any one of these um, vendor rows, you'll then actually see the invoices that were paid and cleared. So these will be paid, cleared and matched all at the same time automatically by the program. So those were the, the two that were open for the first vendor. <clears throat> and if we um, click on this um, second one over here, we can then always see um, all of the detail that made up the 400,000. And remember, we had those four large invoices. So these guys have actually been paid and posted now. 
And if we click on, yeah, and the, we can remember the exceptions that, that we had set up. We don't need to jump into those again. So now these are payments have now been uh, been posted. And let's try the application log this time. I mentioned the log. I know it was failing before in the proposal, but we fixed the connectivity now. So now this is the application log. This is really just a technical log if you need more detail or you are trying to triage errors. So the log, by clicking the toggle on for additional log, this just allows you extra information if you need to specifically look for errors or reasons why things didn't print or get more technical information. So for more technical users, this log um, you know, could be useful to you. I just wanted to make sure you could see what that looked like and it is available on the proposal as well. So that's just um, displaying the log and we can just click um, back out of that and get back to our main screen. So now um, payments have been processed and we can just then go back to the home screen. So now you know how to use the payment run tile to do the proposal and to do the payments. So let's um, look at the next step of monitoring payments. Um, so whenever we do a payment run, we actually also end up having payment media being created. So what do we mean by that? So if you did a, a payment run and you now posted, for instance, checks, the payment media would be the printed checks. If you were doing um, electronic payments like we did in this example, the payment media is a bank transfer file. So this happens automatically at the same time, and but this procedure will be different depending on your own company and it will vary from country to country. Approval workflows and processes are also country specific. There is also a monitor payments tile that's available. It's not, it's not configured in the training system, but I just want to show you what it looks like so that you can understand potential for workflow tracking. So if we um, click on this um, manage um, payment media tile, You'll then see that because we did a domestic transfer um, US with the ACH, we will have a file generated. So if I put in company code 1710 and execute that, we'll see that there are three payment files existing, but this one is the one that we did that says new at the bottom. See the AP001. So this is an electronic file in ACH format that can be sent to a bank and downloaded. So this is a way to monitor what's been happening with that activity. So if you now downloaded that file, and again, this could be automated in your company, but as a manual process, it is possible to download this file. And uh, I'm just going to open it as a, as a text file now just to show you that this is actually SAP creating the payment in the ACH format that could then be sent to a bank. Again, your local procedure will vary, but this is what SAP is doing in the background. Besides the financial posting, you're actually getting the, the electronic payment file that can be sent to your bank who can then execute um, the payments to vendors. So that's uh, an idea of what that file looks like. And this helps track that it's been downloaded because obviously you want tight controls on how these files are used and downloaded and sent to banks. You don't want them just being uh, you know, processed all the time. Okay, so that's the... Um, payment media tile. There's also this monitor payments tile. As I said, this one is not configured in this training system, but you'll see that it does show batches and approval statuses that can also be used. Um, so these are just things to think about or to follow up on your own uh, local procedures that you, that you could have in your company. So um, as a payment run review, remember the proposal can be deleted and rerun multiple times. The proposal should be reviewed and approved before final payment. Payments can only be processed once, and then the actual payment medium, i.e. the electronic file or the checks, etc., and the bank communications are country and company specific. The payment uh, list shows what invoices are matched and cleared and what the payment document numbers are. Remember, this is the Fiori interactive payment list. This is where you review your proposals, payments, and exceptions, where we showed you the summary, the payment, and the drill down, and the exceptions. This used to really be a printed report um, more often in ECC. So that's how you can um, enter new view payment runs. The classic um, you know, proposal list view looks like this in ECC. It is still available and you can still run and print it from the, um, from the F110 transaction or this program with SE38, but it's much easier to see it dynamically on screen. But just to let you know, if you were used to this one in the old screens, it is still available. And just to confirm the overall process flow, and this will be in the appendix, just remember, you first enter invoices, you can report on the items to understand them, create a payment proposal, is it okay? If it's not approved, then you can go through, delete the proposal, redo the proposal as many times as you like. Once it's approved, then you can't 
um, go back. Once you've, once you've said OK, I've approved and I'm now actually posting the payment run, this is now like going through the traffic light and you're now heading through to green. So remember, there should be strong SOX controls and segregation of duties between the payment run and the proposal. Because once the payment run is created, payment media will automatically be created and the payment media is then going to be sent to your external bank, which will result in real money being paid to your suppliers. And this is why you need strong controls around this area.